Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, innies, outies, and in between us. My name's Dan, and welcome back to another PAP Reports. Today is Monday the 2nd of March 2020, and today we're starting with a former Metropolitan Police Constable whose allegations over gross misconduct were proven after he was found to have been engaging in an inappropriate relationship with a victim of domestic violence. What a charming fella. The two-day gross misconduct hearing concluded after a panel found that PC Nicholas Desolist breached the standards of professional behaviour in relation to honesty and integrity, orders and instructions, confidentiality, conduct and authority, respect and courtesy. Full house there, son. Desolist resigned from the Metropolitan Police Service ahead of the hearing, which they are generally advised to do by their force rep. But the panel found that his actions amounted to gross misconduct, which would have led to his dismissal had he still been employed. Thankfully, someone saw fit to actually have this person placed on the College of Policing's barred list. An IOPC spokesperson said, We began our investigation in July 2018 following a referral from the Metropolitan Police Force after they became aware that PC Desolist based at Collindale Police Station, had formed a relationship with the victim he met through the course of his duties. PC Desolist asked his senior officer if the victim could join his response team for a ride-along. <laughs> but the request was dis declined. PC Desolist was reminded about forming inappropriate relationships by the senior officer and advised, advised not to pursue a relationship. Our investigators gathered evidence, including telephone records and computer system audits. We interviewed the officer. Online evidence gathered showed that the officer had formed a relationship with the victim and had taken foreign holidays together. In March 2019, we concluded our investigation and passed our findings back to the Metropolitan Police. We found that PC Dersalist had a case to answer for gross misconduct and the Metropolitan Police agreed. IOPC Regional Director Sarah Green said, PC Dersalist clearly and persistently set out to pursue someone whom he knew to be a victim of crime, abusing his position to form a relationship. The public expects officers to maintain exemplary standards of conduct, integrity and professionalism. Not so sure that's true these days. These were serious allegations and the independent panel has reinforced the message that this sort of behaviour by police officers is never acceptable. Subscriber Credible Threat sent me the following to share with you, so thank you, Credible Threat. This one is about PC Jonathan O'Rourke. Uh, sorry, I mean XPC Jonathan O'Rourke, who last year was captured on camera at the Liberty Stadium when Swansea played Cardiff City on October the 27th. He was captured on camera shouting and making rude hand gestures at rival fans. When approached by a South Wales police inspector who had been advised he was a constable or a PCSO, O'Rourke said he was a postman. He was then seen passing his wallet to another person and later admitted he was a PCSO. Not exactly crime of the year, but as we expect these constables to be held to a higher moral standard and as they would have zero hesitation jumping on one of us for the same, then it's important to share this. When interviewed on December the 11th last year, he said he was ashamed and embarrassed at his actions. He said he had panicked and wanted to hide the fact that he was a police officer. But you weren't though, was you? You're a PCSO. Mr O'Rourke went on to admit that his lies breached honesty and integrity standards and that his behaviour towards the opposition fans breached discreditable conduct standards. After the hearing, Chief Constable Mark Collins said the officer's behaviour at the match and subsequent lies are so serious that dismissal would have been warranted in order to maintain public confidence in the police service. Mr O'Walk was placed on the police barred list for five years, thankfully. Although he can appeal to the Police Appeals Tribunal within 10 working days, which unfortunately is something that will most likely happen. And seeing as information such as whether he is removed from the College of Police barring list or is allowed back on it will be information that's never actually divulged. We won't know if he is allowed to return to policing. Back to the IOPC now. The IOPC are trying to persuade the public that they really are independent and for justice for the public by recently announcing that victims will be given the chance to appeal 
when the police watchdog decides not to pursue prosecutions of officers facing disciplinary action. Now this comes after many incidents where police have been subject of action against them but have left the force prior to any hearing and where the IOPC believe that criminal action shouldn't take place by deciding not to send the file to the CPS, which so far allows dodgy coppers to ultimately get away with their misdeeds. In a report published on Friday, the IOPC said, we are developing a victim's right to review scheme to give victims the right to request a review of our decision not to refer an investigation to the CPS although that review will be reviewed by the people that reviewed it in the first place. We are keen to ensure there is no disparity between the rights of a victim who alleges that a crime was committed by a member of the public and one who alleges that a crime was committed by a person serving within the police. We envisage it will apply to criminal in investigations that have been carried out or directed by the IOPC and it will enable the individual to request that the original decision is reviewed. Well, whether this will make any difference or not is another story entirely. We hear all too often about shake-ups in favour of the public, but yet we're still slowly having our rights eroded. One of those rights is to have justice for wrongdoing against us, and with so many gatekeepers now in the way of the public and their justice, it almost makes it a worthless endeavour following up any action, not simply due to the preventative measures put in place, but also the costs. If, however, we do start to see more police being held fully accountable for their actions, then the IOPC may in fact be able to scrape up back some, you know, some semblance of respect, but I hardly think it's very likely. Former police staff, 36 year old Bradley Paul Smith from York has been jailed for four years not suspended for possessing and distributing indecent images of children and voyeurism. Smith worked as a safety camera van operator in North Yorkshire Police until he was arrested on the 6th of February 2019 and suspended from duty. And I would like to take this opportunity to say to all of those people who bitch and moan about photographers taking pictures in public, mm. saying that or I've always said to each and every one of you that you make such a big fuss about someone in public who's visible who you can even go and speak to about taking pictures but you're oh so happy to allow yourself and your children to be picked up on hundreds of cameras multiple times a day by people who hide in darkened rooms, scanning the towns for so-called criminals. You don't know who they are, where they are. You can't even see them to see if you get any bad vibes from them. But this, this right here, is why you should stop being a dick about public photography and start making a fuss about those who you can't see who are filming your children. Anyway, Smith's arrest came as a result from information supplied to North Yorkshire Police by the National Crime Agency's child exploitation and online protection. Numerous smartphones, tablets and laptops were being forensically examined by digital forensics to secure evidence and a large collection of indecent images of children going back to 2011 were recovered, including those classified in the most extreme category A, as well as category B and category C offences. The investigation team also recovered numerous videos taken from inside the men's changing room at a local gym. A video of a teenager getting changed inside a bedroom and a child asleep on a bed. Officers were able to prove that Smith had filmed these particular videos himself. Good. On the 9th of December 2019, Smith was charged with two counts of distribution of indecent images of children 
three counts of making indecent images of children and one count of taking indecent image of a child and eight counts of voyeurism. He appeared at York Magistrates Court on the 14th of January and the case was committed to York Crown Court on the 10th of February where Smith pleaded guilty to the following offences. On the 6th of February 2019, distributed indecent photos, namely two indecent videos of a child in the most extreme category A. Between 13th of June 2017 and 7th of February 2019, distributed five indecent images of a child in category C. On or before 6th of February 2019, made 490 indecent photographs of children in category A, consisting of 247 images, 243 movies. On or before the 6th of February 2019, made 528 indecent photographs of children in category B, consisting of 342 images, 186 movies. On or before 6th of February 2019, made 2,643 photographs in category C, consisting of 2,608 images, 35 movies. Took an indecent photograph of a child in York between 30th of June 2014 and 21st of April 2015, and eight counts of voyeurism between June 2014 and July 2019. Detective Sergeant Lee Allenby of the Online Abuse and Exploitation Team said, when the evidence of his offending was presented to him during the investigation, Bradley Smith initially claimed he was only interested in adult pornography and that the indecent images of children were downloaded accidentally. However, we were able to prove beyond doubt that he is a serious offender and it is pleasing that he admitted his guilt at court. He is now facing up to the consequences of his sickening actions. DS Allenby added a very concerning aspect of the investigation is that Smith, while still on police duties and on the same day of his arrest, had uploaded two category A indecent images of children on his personal tablet device. This showed how deeply he was embroiled in this depraved and secretive world. However, there is no evidence or suggestion that offences were committed using police equipment. This case shows that North Yorkshire Police is determined and equipped to secure justice in such a complex investigation. Also that we operate without fear or favour when the, even when the suspect works for the same police force. Well that's a pile of shit. And even if you do, none of the other Yorkshire police forces act without fear or favour. <laughs> Bit of a shocking report now. Into the fact that last year, over 400 sex offenders escaped a criminal record because they apologised to their victims. Community resolution orders were put in place to help deliver swift justice for lesser crimes. For example, a criminal damage offence, which could be dealt with by way of making the offender apologise and pay for the cost of the repair to the damage, which is supposed to alleviate some of the stress from the police force and be all round cheaper for the system, rather than paying the costs of taking someone to court. However, it seems that the police are getting lazy and they're using CROs on offences such as sexual assault, grooming and flashing as 431 sex offences were dealt with by way of a community resolution order last year, including some offences involving two consenting underage children. There were also two occasions where police cleared up cases of adults sexually grooming children with a community resolution order. Oh, I'm terribly sorry kids, I didn't mean to abuse you. What the fuck? In total, there were 29 sexual assaults on women aged 13 or over that were dealt with by using a community resolution. David Spencer of the Centre for Crime Prevention said that the public would find it staggering that the Crown Prosecution Service is using community resolutions in this way, particularly in cases involving children. No shit. A spokesman for the National Police Chiefs Council said community resolutions help police handle low-level offending proportionately. Victims' wishes are central to our decision-making. Our decisions are thoroughly examined by force scrutiny panels. Community resolutions are used in 1% 1, 1 of sexual offence cases. So let's put that in perspective. 1% of... Uh, sorry, if 431 offences was 1%, then the total number of sexual offence cases last year was 43,100. 
that is staggering and incredibly frightening. Two police officers who were called to the Streatham terror attack are actually under investigation for dangerous driving and misconduct. Now it was suggested at the time, but I was unable to find much information about it. Uh, however, two people were injured after an unmarked police vehicle crashed on its way to the incident where several people were stabbed by a Sadesha man, who was under active surveillance at the time. And the second vehicle, apparently traveling with the first, continued to the scene. Now, whilst I believe that a stabbing is an emergency situation and police need to get to the scene as a priority, this doesn't mean that they should be ignored if they have an accident or, worst case scenario, kill someone. The Metropolitan Police Federation described the move as astonishing and a joke and are angered by the announcement. Ken Marsh, chairman of the Met Police Federation, said, the public will be appall appalled when they hear that brave police officers responding to a terrorist attack can be treated in such a manner. Well, thanks Ken for speaking on my behalf. However, I'm not appalled. What kind of message does this send? These officers and their colleagues put their lives on the line that day to protect the public. Now, potentially their careers are on the line. It's absurd, a complete joke. Well, Ken, it sends the message that no one is above the law. As for putting their lives on the line that day, what about the lives of the public that were put on the line that day by the Met, by allowing this cretin to walk the streets? I said it at the time, the police suggest they know of all of these terrorists, but they don't act. Then they go on to commit these atrocities. How about simply targeting them every time you see them? make them realise that they can't leave their house and walk to the shops without being stopped. Of course, this is only if they are known to be related to terrorism, as ultimately you need reasonable grounds to stop people. But if these people are on a watch list, I'd suggest that's pretty reasonable grounds to give them a pat down every time they're seen. I mean, if I was a known criminal and the police stopped me every day, I sure as hell wouldn't risk it. Ken Marsh added, no one is saying the police officers should not be scrutinised or that their actions should not be accountable. Yeah, nobody apart from you are saying that. Yeah, well, I know. But the last, thing officers respond, the last thing officers responding to a terrorist attack should be worrying about is whether their prompt response and bravery will put their livelihoods in danger. Maybe not, Ken, but what they should be worrying about is whether their actions will put the public's lives at danger. I mean... What is it you're exactly trying to say here? It's okay for the police to commit crimes providing they're going to fight crimes? Or are you simply trying to get people to think that it's okay if the police kill someone, for example, while they're on the way to prevent other people from being killed? That's a bit like saying two wrongs make a right. A spokesman for the IOPC said on Friday, February the 28th, we served notices of investigation for dangerous driving and gross misconduct on the officer driving the vehicle involved in the collision and on the driver of a marked police vehicle, which was in close proximity to the unmarked vehicle, but not involved in the collision. A criminal investigation does not mean that criminal charges will necessarily follow. Oh shit. Misconduct notices do not imply guilt, but are to inform the officer that their behaviour and conduct is under investigation and the level of severity. Such notices are not judgmental in any way. Well, only time will tell whether police are exempt from crimes while reacting to crimes, although I suspect many people already know the answer to that one. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts, as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, all. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, hit that subscribe button up the top there. If you haven't already, become a subscriber. That is support enough 
share the videos, comment, like, it all helps. If you're looking for something else to watch, up top there is my latest video. Down the bottom there is a video that YouTube recommends for you.